Welcome to Circuit Valley. I'm Gaurav. Today I'm going to show you one more little project of mine. So this little PCB is capable of generating 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz. It's a stamp size board. You can easily integrate into your project. This project is complement to my USB RF signal generator, which I published few days ago on this channel and also on the blog. You can of course use this little USB device to generate the whatever the signal you want to generate. Or if you want to integrate this RF signal generation capability onto your project, you can of course use these small little stamp boards. This project is developed on the based based on the feedback from the community. It's around 28 millimeter by 31 millimeter. It's very very small size, compact. Everything which is packed into this USB device is have been packed onto this little PCB as well. It has a ADF 4351 analog devices RF signal generator IC. Outputting here on these pins, it also has a small little microcontroller PIC18F25K50. This microcontroller allows you to control the ADF chip without knowing the ADF protocol. You just send him the frequency. You just send the frequency information to microcontroller. Microcontroller will automatically program the PLL. Whatever has been built into this thing, for example, sweep, hop, external references, input, output, sync, everything is have been built. Sweep, hop. External references, input, output, everything has been already built into this little board. So it works really, really well, fully featured pack. So on this microcontroller, you have two options to communicate now. Previously with this device, you only have USB. Now you can communicate to this microcontroller over USB or you can console or you can also communicate over UART. Both of the interfaces are available and active at the same time. If you want, you can disable the microcontroller by holding on the reset pin low and you can directly of course control all these pins, the SPI pins, RF input, output, lock and every other pin from this microcontroller which allow you to directly control this output of this chip and directly take total control of this particular chip. So three ways to operate. You can keep the microcontroller reset, access SPI interface, clock inputs and RF output directly there. Of course, you use the USB interface. It uses HID protocol, so you, no driver required, at least no proprietary driver required. Over USB is fully programmable over Qt application or the Python script, which is already provided on the GitHub. You can, of course, send the UART command as well. It's tips, typical AT style UART command. You can program, you can just send a UART command to program the particular frequency you need and microcontroller will automatically do PL calculation and automatically modify the required registers to do calculations. Of course, this previous device supports external reference. So on this pin, you can of course supply external reference as well. Here, there are pins to do sync in and out. So you can do when the sweep is going on or any other operation is going on, microcontroller notifies you or can take input as well. This is very fully feature packed. There is also a regulator to supply 3.3 volt local regulator, power status LED, lock LED, and both of the RF, both of the RF output. There are enough grounds right next to RF outputs and all on the boards as well. It's a six layer board, very high quality PCB, can be used in multiple various projects. If you want to take a closer look, I'll zoom in a bit. This is how it looks, both of the LEDs. These are two input buffers to select a clock between onboard oscillator or external clock. These are the two RX and TX pin for the UART, USB pin plus and minus, microcontroller reset, RF outputs, ground, 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 three grounds right next to another, lock pin, 5 volts input, it will automatically regulate to 3.3 volts. There's a fuse as well and there's not much else to it on the back of the PCB. There is also not much, it's intentionally kept solder mask and sill screen so that it does not short onto the PCB. This distance between both of the pads is a uh, standard so you can use standard PCB for prototyping and everything else and of course you can directly mount as a SMD device through these castellated holes. I'll quickly show you the software features which it provides maybe I'll show you the UART application as well how does it look on the UART itself. So this is the web page and down here probably at the bottom these are the commands so you have frequency command which sets the frequency of course you can set of course 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz with 10 kilohertz resolution a is to select if you want aux output, aux input, external reference, external reference with aux output and aux input. This is for legacy reasons. I have kept the option same and two more two more options have been added. So you just set dollar A2 to enable reference enable. And B is to set sweep frequency, C is to set sweep stop frequency, E is to erase EEPROM settings, G is for uh, step of the frequency j is to set uh, time in milliseconds and r is for reference frequency it's for the oscillator you can set from 10 megahertz to 250 megahertz enable output disabled output dollar o 
will disable dollar O zero will disable output. There will be a space of course in the middle or more on most of the commands. Some commands do not have any parameters, so you just type dollar P to write everything to PLL, and uh, it will only write to PLL, not will not write to EEPROM, and you just write T to save to EEPROM. Enable disable start on boot. Multiple devices can be programmed with same settings, and they all can be start operating when you send them O command rather than starting themselves on the boot. Okay, so I is for identify, and uh, this is an interesting option. This is this comes with the parameter. You have to type dollar m zero to five for accessing zero to five register and hex value. And this is the only value, or this is the only parameter which has two two byte length in command because it needs the register address as well. And dollar question mark is to print everything. Baud rate is fixed one one five two zero zero. Frequency resolution is 10 kilohertz, and uh, reference frequency 10 to 250 megahertz. Everything is as normal expected, and uh, commands need to be end with slash r slash n. And there is no echo issue. That's why we need to enable the local echo so that you can access this. Of course, you can operate the device using standard GUI. There is no restriction on GUI. If you have access to USB application, then you can access uh, GUI or QT and GUI application available in the GitHub repository. You can download binaries and uh, you don't need to compile yourself directly. They will run portable on Windows and on Linux as well, of course. And there is a Python application which runs on Linux. And it also allow you to set every single parameter you can imagine. And it works really well, very, very uh, reliably. So this is shown that RF signal generator device, multiple device can be handled by serial number and everything else. So this works really well. This is the PCB of the board. PCB contains a microcontroller on the bottom section. On the top section, there is a, of course the PLL device and there's the output and with three grounds, enough to, uh, enough grounds planes is available. Six layer PCB, very high quality design. It works really well. And uh, to schematic, there is not much to it. Primary microcontroller and the PLL device itself. This is the reference selection um, reference selection muxes in the bottom so they allow you to select the references and the device can be of course operated in the direct SPI control mode or you can of course operate in UART mode so when you are operating in UART mode right now on your screen you can see which pins are available so pins which on the left side they are primarily direct control pin on the right side they are the RF outputs and UART and USB pins UART you don't need any special application for USB. You will need a HID application. It does not need any driver, but it needs HID. So this is the sync IO. And uh, of course, uh, you can supply the clock as well. We forgot to mention there. And uh, you can supply the clock that it works with the clock, of course. And this is the condition when you do not have a microcontroller enabled. You can, of course, drive this RST pin low. It will disable the microcontroller and all the pins will be available to you. You can directly write whatever the program you write or whatever the software you want to control the device with. With this, you can easily operate the device directly from your own application. These are the two operating modes available. One is direct mode, another is over USB or UART. So this module itself is quite small and very, very handy. These are the every single pin listed and it's not uh, very vast in terms of uh, size, only like few millimeters thick, around 28 by 31 millimeter. Output is as usual. I'll maybe I'll show you the outputs. Output is exactly comparable to my USB signal generator because the same circuitry, same everything. It's a good quality design. Set up this device on the terminal and you see this uh, baud rate of 115200. So we will start the terminal. I will also enable the local echo. And you see I will have a type dollar question mark and it will give me the current state. So currently device circuit value RF stem firmware 1.8 build 1029 and uh, build 129 and from frequency set to 45 megahertz and reference is set to 25 megahertz. This is displayed in kilohertz because in the firmware everything is handled in kilohertz actually. So now we'll set the frequency to maybe 55.5 and now let's do the question mark. We got 55.5 megahertz so that's it actually this interface is quite generic and there are a few commands from dollar f 
for setting the frequency and uh, and dollar b to set a stop a start frequency and dollar c to set the end frequency and uh, dollar g is to set the step frequency maybe 1 megahertz is enough dollar j 50 millisecond step and uh, then then that's it if you want to write this stuff to the device it will do control t and it will automatically write it will be notified by the led and if you do question mark of course it has appropriately set whatever we uh, have recently wrote and there is not much to it actually this is very very easy interface you can easily integrate this device into your project and it works reliably well so that's it for this video for more information and complete documentation you can visit my website www.circuitvary.com